guys at A Periodical launched a little competition to find the integer sequence 2013. It's a little bit fun, it's not a serious thing, uh, but basically they've looked at the online encyclopedia of in integer sequences and they've basically run a competition to see which one is the best. And it's based on various categories like aesthetics, novelty, explicability, completeness, these sorts of things. But it's just a bit fun, but we thought we'd, we'd go through these sequences and I'm not going to tell you which one I like best, um, so I'll leave that to the end. I'm going to do my best poker face to try and keep it a secret. So the first one in the sequence is it's to do with the decimal expansion of a particular constant. Okay, so the decimal expansion of Hinchine's constant is the following. 2.6854 Okay, so that doesn't look very exciting, right, just by looking at it. Keychain constant is, a, is a, a remarkable number, actually. Basically, if you take any number, or almost all numbers, to be more precise, almost all numbers, and you work out the uh, continued fraction expansion of that guy. So, for example, we just take a, you know, a general number, x, and we can know that we can write this as a naught plus 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2 plus and so on. You keep going on like this, right? This is called, these a0, a1, a2, and all those are called the continued fraction expansion. Well, let's say I take the product of all these a's. So I take a1 times a2, forget a0, a th times a3, and so on, to a n. And I take the geometric mean, so I just take an nth power of that. And I see what that gives me as I, send, as I go to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, it goes to Kitchen's constant. And this is true of almost any number. That's amazing. I think that's an amazing fact. It's almost like, now obviously you're going to immediately tell me, well, it's not true of a lot of numbers that you know about. It's not true of a half, for example, because the continued fraction expansion of a, of a half is not, it's clearly it's just a, a, any rational number. It, it, you can get basically any number out doing this process. But most numbers do. That's the amazing thing. Almost all numbers. No rational numbers will do it, but most numbers do. Uh, pi, for example, is thought. So when you take the, the expansion of this guy, this, calculate this number for pi, you're expected to get Hinchine's constant. In fact, Hinchine proved that almost all numbers do it. By that, he means all numbers except for a sort of potentially an infinitesimally small set. And the great thing about this is, is that k naught itself, which seems to know about almost all numbers, also knows about itself because it's thought, although this hasn't been proven, that k naught, when you do this expansion for it, averages to itself, then take this average, it recovers itself. So if you like, it's a little bit, if there was a number that had, was, if God had a number, right, it would be this number because it knows about almost all other numbers and itself. It's kind of like beautifully self-contained. Okay, so next one in the sequence, this is the Vferic primes and they're basically there's only two numbers in this sequence that we know of 1093 and 3511 so what what are these guys the v for it primes are any prime number p such that p squared divides 2 to the p minus 1 minus 1 and it's true of these two numbers we don't know if it's true of any other numbers. In fact, I was interested to see if there were any higher ones than this, and I actually found a paper which says that, well, they've done a search for Vickerick primes all the way up to 6.7 times 10 to the 15, and they haven't found any more. So you've got these two low guys, and then nothing all the way up to that. So the next one in the sequence is going to be some huge number, if indeed it exists. Well, the reason Vickerick was interested in them is they seem to have something to do with Fermat's last theorem. He was trying to prove Fermat's last theorem. The reason is that Fiefrich proved the following result. You take x to the p plus y to the p plus z to the p equals zero, x, y, and z are integers, and you say that p does not divide x, y, z, then you can prove, and this is what Fiefrich did, that p has to be one of these Fiefrich primes. Okay, so next up is Gollum sequence. So this is Gollum sequence. Gollum, like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, well actually this guy's got an amazing name, Solomon Gollum. That's just the coolest name in the world, right? So he's actually quite a, an interesting guy. He's a mathematician that invented pentominoes, which is a mathematical game, but it was the forerunner of Tetris actually. So Solomon Gollum was the guy who essentially invented Tetris. What is his sequence? His sequence is, is the following. One, two, two, three, three, four, 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 five, 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 and so on. And what does this sequence tell us? Well, this sequence kind of knows about itself because 
the sort of nth position in this sequence tells you how many times the number n appears in the sequence. Let's start with the first position. This, then the question is, how many times does 1 appear in the sequence? Well, the answer is it only appears once. It can only appear once. I couldn't put a 2 here. It wouldn't make sense. Then I go to the next point. Now I'm asking how many times does the number 2 appear in the sequence? Well, you can see that it is 2. It had to be 2. It couldn't be 1 because then 1 would have appeared twice and I'd have had to put 2 here. You see, so it kind of makes sense that it has to be two. So then I go to the third point in the sequence, which is this position here. OK, now the question I have to ask is, how many times does three appear in the sequence? But I've already said that two had to appear twice, so I better put a two there. So the number of times that three has to appear in the sequence has to be two. And so there they are, the next point in the sequence. And you keep going, you keep going in this manner, this position the question is, how many times does 4 appear in the sequence? Well, here you are, it appears three times, and so on, and so on. And you build the sequence up this way. It kind of knows about itself. It's sort of, it's almost like it, it, it doesn't, you know, maybe it's had a bit of therapy or something. It, it really knows it's, it's, it's in a being sort of thing. Um, now, there is a little, another feature of this sequence is that as you get to very, very large numbers, where does this sequence go to? Well, it goes to the following. The nth position of this sequence will tend towards phi 2 minus the phi n phi minus 1. Now, what is this? OK, this is n. What's this, this ver phi thing I've written down, this Greek letter? This is the golden ratio. It just appears everywhere. OK, so the next one are the largest metadromes. So what, what is this? Well, a metadrome is a number which appears in strict ascending, where the numbers appear in strict ascending order. Let me write down the sequence first. 0, 1, 5, 27, 194, 1865, and so on. It's the largest metadrome, so the largest number that you can write where all the numbers are in strict ascending order, base n. OK, so the first position. This is 0, base 1. OK, first position. So it's got to be something that's base 1. OK, and it's a large number we can write out in strict ascending order, base 1 is 0. OK, so this is 0, base 1. This guy, this next one, 1, what is that? Well, that is 1, base 2. OK, so it's the large number we could have written, but they're all in strict ascending order, base 2, because we're in the second position. Those two aren't that exciting. It gets a little bit more interesting when you get to the next number. So we know what this number should be. Well, it's 5. Well, what's that? That is 1. 2 base 3. OK, well, of course it is, because 1, 2 base 3 is basically 3 plus 2. OK, next one, keep going, 27. This is 1, 2, 3 base 4. OK, which is 4 squared plus uh, 2 times 4 plus 3, which is 27. OK, and you keep going like this. And this is how the, the sequence emerges. Well, the next on the sequence would be 1, 2, 3, 4, base 5, OK? And the next would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, base 6. Exactly, exactly, and so on. I think that one's a bit dull, if I'm honest. It doesn't, that doesn't push my buttons, unfortunately, that sequence. So I haven't figured out what one's your favourite yet. I, I think It's are... not that one. I'll give you a clue on that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, so moving swiftly on, it is all the sevens. I think this is your favourite, isn't it, Brady? I have to admit, I don't know why it's, I don't know much about it yet, but it appeals to me. OK, so what is all the sevens? Well, it does what it says on the tin. It's seven, 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 and so on. This is just a nonsense sequence. I think it's just a nonsense sequence, but, you know, it's a bit of fun and... There is some, you can relate it to some maths if you, if you try hard enough. So. I'm not sure that's my favourite anymore. Has he even gone yeah. off it? Okay. I thought actually there was some equation for that. But. OK, so we now come to the last of the uh, sequences that's, that's uh, been nominated. And these are the wild numbers. Ooh, that sounds exciting. OK, so what are the wild numbers? Well, they are 11, 67, 2... They're supposed to be an infinite number, but what are these? What is this sequence? Well, it's actually a completely made up sequence that co has come out of fiction. There was a guy called uh, Philibert Schott, I hope, I hope I've pronounced that properly, who wrote a novel about a mathematician and, uh, and he solved a problem called the wild number problem. So what was the wild number problem? The idea was that you would take any whole number, you would apply some what are described as simple operations to that, OK, that would turn that number into fractions. And then you would keep applying these operations until you get back to a whole number again. 
The claim is that the, those numbers that you end up with are the wild numbers. And of all the examples that were supposedly known, these were the only numbers that were popping up. So the question would be, are, all, you know, are there an infinite number of wild numbers? Are there numbers that aren't wild numbers? Well, in the book, uh, apparently three is a tame number. It can never, it's been proven that this can never be reached. And what the guy in the story does is he, um, he the idea is that he will, he proves, he's a very, he's supposed to be a mediocre mathematician uh, who's disillusioned with his career, but he proves that, um, that there are an infinite number of wild numbers, which is, which is uh, been this long-standing problem. There's a nice little uh, account of, uh, on, the, on the archive, actually, that we use uh, by the author of, of the maths behind it and the ideas behind it. The, but he's written a novel, but this is a paper about the novel, so this is what he's done. So he, he says something quite interesting in it, in that the idea was that would be this mediocre mathematician that then ended up sort of solving Fermat's last theorem, which, of course, at the time hadn't been solved, but of course now it has by, by Andrew Wiles. But uh, at the time it hadn't. Um, so the idea was there's this mediocre mathematician that comes up with a proof of Fermat's last theorem. And, okay, he, so he, he sort of pitched this idea to a mathematician friend of his, and his, his mathematician friend just sort of shot it down straight away. He said, there's no way a mediocre mathematician would be able to actually come up with a, solve a, a long-standing proof like that. It would always be somebody who's an established genius. Now, obviously, that's true in Andrew Wiles' case that, you know, a genius did ultimately find a proof for Fermat's last theorem. But recently, of course, we did a video about, uh, you know, this prime number theorem, the twin prime conjectures, and that was solved by what was essentially, you know, not a star of mathematics. Uh, so maybe, maybe the, the, uh, the author's friend was a little bit unfair there. But anyway, it gave the author license to, to then go away and invent these wild numbers. And, uh, so he made up wild numbers so he, instead of using Fermat's last Exactly, theorem. exactly. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy though, isn't it? If you do solve one of these um, theorems, you become a genius. Well, I think so, so yeah. Always yeah, be yeah, sure, sure, exactly. But I think the claim was that these people would have been noticed before because they would have, you know, these, these theorems get built up and you build towards them and the proof size. So you've shown me all six. Yeah. Which was your favourite? It's got, to be, it's got to be Hitchin's constant, right? The decimal expansion of that. I mean, that number is just... I've blown away by that number and, and, and what it is. I mean, you can see that almost all numbers, when you, you know, take this property to do with the, um, you know, the continued fraction expansion, almost all numbers give you back this constant. That's amazing. That's an amazing fact. Except the numbers you and I use almost well, every day. But that's, but that's such a tiny fraction. That's a, that's a minuscule fraction of all numbers that are out there. You know, it's, it, it's a measure zero fraction of it, in fact. So the vast majority of numbers, the vast, truly vast majority, do give back this guy. Pi gives it. Well, that's what, that's what we think. So that, for me, is, is absolutely incredible. Um, and so that's why I like that guy. I mean, it, it, as I said, if there is a number which, you know, it has, has any kind of divinity to it, it's this one. I think I read somewhere that if, we, um, if we're going to sort of send out some information to aliens, we should send out, uh, and it's going to be numeric, we should tell them about this constant. So I do like that number, but I do have a sequence, a personal sequence that, that I like more that I'd like to share with you, Brady. Oh, I think I, I know what this is going to be. Uh, so Actually, I, I know what this is. Okay, well, let me, let me write it down, okay. and then you see if you can guess it, Brady. Okay. Guess what, it, what the video is. Okay, so... It, <laughs> 